With a golden eagle boldly perching upon the cactus of prophecy, the first fully illustrated page of the Codex Mendoza is among the most famous works of Aztec art. It is not in fact the manuscript's first page, but it is often treated as such. Hello, this episode of the Native American Writing Systems playlist continues from the last subject on Mexican picture writing with a detailed look at the Codex Mendoza. It will begin with introductory comments on the work, then follow with fascinating images from each of its three main sections. Mexica Aztec Conquests Province Tribute Lists Mexica Aztec Society Named after the first viceroy of the New Spain colony, the Codex Mendoza was produced between 1541 and 1542. A native artist composed the text in pictographic script, writing through symbolic pictures. However, as this was a colonial project, the Spanish provided the paper and assembled the pages like a traditional book, unlike the long, folding format of the Mexican codices. A scribe also wrote commentary in Spanish letters to translate or at least clarify many of the key ideas among the painted images. Comparing the icons with their transcribed names shows us that the Aztecs could write with the rebus principle, the representation of sounds, by combining their corresponding images. We will find several examples in this text. The first section of the manuscript is about the history of the Mexica, the Aztec group that, from their capital Mexico Tenochtitlan, would become the dominant power in Mexico before the arrival of the Spanish. It specifically chronicles the Mexica emperors and the major milestones and conquests that took place during the reign of each. But before delving into two of the examples, a couple details in the frontispiece merit attention. The striped compact object in the center of this scene is a stone, tet. Sprouting from above is a prickly pear cactus, nochtli. The land among the abundance of prickly pears and rocks is a literal translation of te nochtitlan. Beneath the composite picture is a set of shield and arrows decorated in the distinctly te nochtitlan style, with seven cotton tufts. And the Spanish writing at bottom finally confirms that this image reads te nochtitlan. The golden eagle perched atop was an augur to the wandering Aztec tribe looking for a home. It meant that this would be the land where they would build their city. This emblem appears in the Mexican national flag. We now turn to two of the Aztec emperors presented in this historical section. The main figure is the third Tlatoani, or Mexica Aztec emperor, identified by the Timali, Nahuatl for shield, and profuse smoking, Popoca. Timal Popoca. His years of reign appear at far left, a column of descending geoglyphs. Four rabbit, five reed, six stone knife, seven house, eight rabbit, and so on, listing the years from 1417 to 1427. The Aztecs used solid lines to indicate when ideas were conceptually linked. See, for instance, the line linking the seated emperor to the first geoglyph to say, this is the first year of the reign of Chimalpopoca. One of the most dramatic events drawn out in the Codex Mendoza appears on this page. The city of Chalco, southeast of Tenochtitlan, sent men to ambush an envoy from the capital with stones, shown in the assailing figure's hand as the same striped compact object we saw in the emblem for Tenochtitlan. The attackers are illustrated with the band linked to the icon for Chalco, meaning where jade is. They damaged four canoes and killed five men from Tenochtitlan their heads linked to the prickly pear cactus and stone. Timal Popoca retaliated by sending a Mexica army to torch the Chalco temple. The year count ends with the bottom glyph of 13 reed, a solid line linked to the emperor again, but with closed eyes indicating his death. From just well delineated and organized pictures, we could read the entire page as a history of the reign of Emperor Timal Popoca, from installation to death. Regardless what languages we know, we can read these images fairly precisely. Another noteworthy case in the Mexica royal history is the reign of the sixth Tlatuani, seated on a ruler's mat. Water, or At, running over the face, Shayakat, identifies the emperor as Ashayakat. A milestone event during his reign appears at upper center. Mokiwish, the king of Tlatelolco, who instantly happened to be a cousin of Ashayakat, threw himself off the side of his city's main temple rather than surrender to the Mexica. The most recurrent motif on this page is the image of the burning house, sign of a conquered community. 
Indeed, most of the historical section of the Codex Mendoza is to highlight which foreign lands each Mexica Tlactoani gained for the empire. Continuing the list of conquests under Ashayacat, the next page has some rather interesting examples of the Rebus principle mentioned earlier. At middle left is the community of Mixtlan, land of the clouds, whose sign is combined from Mixtli, cloud, with Tlantli, teeth. Mixtlan. The Mexica Aztecs often used a set of teeth to represent the suffix Tlan, meaning a land or place. They even used rebus to represent places named in foreign languages. An especially interesting example appears at lower left. The site of Tamuin was Huastec, a civilization in northern Mexico whose language was actually related to the Mayan languages southeast of Mesoamerica. The Huastec civilization is the subject for another video. The Mexica pronounced Tamuin as Tamuoc, and to visually represent their approximation of the place name, the painter illustrated a nomadic Tamin tribesman holding the sign for a road, Ootli. This was an attempt to literally draw out the sounds as the Mexica could pronounce them. Tamuoc in the place of the Huastec Mayan name Tamuin. Next to it is the Huastec community Tanpatel, whose original meaning may have been place of metal. However, the Aztecs again chose a phonetic representation. So with the Rebus principle, they capped a mountain with what could be a liver, el tapachtli, with some creative sound rearrangements to read it as patel for the foreign name. I give credit to Stephanie Wood on researching these enigmatic details on the Huastec place names in the Codex Mendoza, and I link to the references in the description. Another site from the Huastec area was Tochpan on the rabbit. Tochpan is today called Tuxpan, a city on the north coast of Veracruz state. This place and the previous two are in the Huasteca region of northern Mexico, and we will return to these lands in the next episode as we proceed to the Codex Mendoza second section on the tribute list.